hanging up for the jam Pull me out on a tight spot Let me listen Anglicans on the move right now Laborers in the new wine vineyard Anglicans on the move right now Laborers in the new wine vineyard Eating to the bone Rallying for a pause Anglicans on the move right now Hey the Anglican voice And I don't know if Jesus is the choice You better come show and rejoice If you know God coming for the girls and the boys It doesn't matter what time Jesus calls you after What matters is as long as you answer I will shake up his spine To get some of that brand new wine Anglicans on the move right now Anglicans on the move right now Eden to the call Rallying for a cause Anglicans on the move right now Good evening, good evening, good evening and welcome to this Sunday's edition of the Anglican Voice on I-95.5 FM as well as the Anglican Outlook TV on YouTube. Thank you for joining us for the Sunday's program as we give God thanks and praise for his glorious blessings to us. Today, I don't know about you guys, but today was a really busy day, but I enjoyed every moment of it. I'll just give you a last snippet of how my day was, right? First, I had to, um, I was visiting the parish of St. Matthias, so I did the service at St. Columba, and from there, I went over to Holy Saviour, where they, I took part in the harvest, and then from there, I went back home to my own parish for the Mother's Union Tea Party. So today was a great show, a great day, and of course, I am ending it with you lovely people here on tonight's edition of the Anglican Voice. We have two ladies who I will introduce shortly who are with us, and we hope that you'll stay tuned to the whole program. But before I get into what the program is tonight, let us begin with a word of prayer. So I ask us to bow our heads and close our eyes and open our hearts as we pray today the Collect for Proper 22. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, for giving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we dare not, or which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for forever and ever. Amen. So, guys... We jump in right in to the first segment, and then before and then after this, we'll have our first M. So, but I would like to introduce to you a great friend of mine. We have known each other since we were a lot younger than we presently are. She hails from the parish where I grew up and where I am still assigned. That is the parish of St. Mary, in particular, the congregation at St. Aidan in Aruka. So that I, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you my wonderful friend, Elysia. Elysia, tell us a bit about yourself so that persons who may not necessarily know that Elysia or forgot about Elysia. Because as you reminded me, you used to be part of the radio program before. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Good evening, Trinidad and Tobago. I am Elysia Garraway, and I um a devoted Anglican. I originally attended St. Oswald's Anglican Church in Caroni. That's where I was confirmed. And I uh, continued my service to God at St. Aidan's Anglican Church in Aruka. I started there about the age 15, and I have been there since. So that's the corner of the vineyard within which I serve. I um involved in uh, the Sunday school. I have been conducting Sunday school classes for over 20 years. I, as Mark said, I was actually also part of the radio program some 20-something years ago as well. 
Um, I also serve with the Sanctuary Girl. And uh, my most recent function would be part of the St. Eden's Harvest Committee. So that's just a little background of my service within the vineyard. That sounds like it is a, quite a lot you have doing. And we commend you and thank you very much for the hard work that you have given for us. So it is You're here to, today you are here to talk about harvest. Now, we are harvest season and people tune in to hear about why they should come to harvest. I mean, everybody have harvest all over the place. I mean, today was St. Ambrose harvest, today was St. Was Holy Saviour par Parish harvest. So it had a lot of harvest going on. So tell us about why you are here today. I am here to invite one and all to the St. Eden's Anglican Church Annual Harvest which is to be held on the 13th of October, 2024. Our service starts at 9 a.m. with a praise and worship session. And we will be joined by our chief, our celebrant or guest preacher, Reverend Professor Father Carlyle Pemberton. Our harvest is normally one of a sense of community where following our service, we usually have a fellowship session. The theme of our harvest this year is giving thanks worthily. That is a powerful, as that is a powerful theme because it speaks to you're not just giving thanks hard heart haphardly, but you're giving thanks to God for everything. And it is an intentional worship to God. That's a beautiful theme for the harvest celebration on that day. So it yes. is here. So tell us a bit. So St. Ada's harvest is the same around the same time every year, correct? Correct. Always the second Sunday of October. Nice. So tell us what, so you, I know that a lot of people will be asking, you got to pay for lunch afterwards. Oh, no, about. not at all. Our <laughs> harvest takes a very community feel. We don't have the traditional stores. We did that years ago, but we stopped that. And instead, two things we do. One, guided by our priest, Father Anderson Maxwell, we are urged to reflect upon our lives and the work God has done for us throughout the year, and to use that as our benchmark to give generously for our harvest thanksgiving. So in addition to giving in kind and donating food and produce, also urge to donate financially, but not just give money just like that, but to seriously reflect upon the goodness of God and the work he has done in our lives through the year and respond accordingly based on our means, of course. So that's one of the main differences with our harvest. Yes, we have the element, of course, of the produce and the gifts of the earth. The second main difference with our harvest is that fellowship following the service. We meet, we gather, we dine. We all contribute, the various other churches within our parish, all our members contribute food items. We put it together. It's like one huge potluck. We put everything together and we are able to share and everyone gets to participate in the meal for free. So you come to our harvest and you're able to have not only an edifying service, but you are also able to partake in a fellowship of communion, community meal where everyone shares what they have brought to the table, literally. And it's amazing how we are able to feed so many people and how generous our members are in terms of 
providing cooked meals for us for this harvest event. We also include an element of entertainment. So we have a popular DJ. We also have live surprise entertainers coming in. Our parish and our church in particular is known for its feel of liveliness and vibrancy, our vibrance. We love to dance. We love to sing. So we will have lots of dancing also following our meal. So it's a lovely community feel at our harvest. We also give our produce to those who are present. So you can also collect bags with your produce. And even that, we are able to distribute so many bags to so many persons. So it's it's a wonderful community feel. Thank you. And as we speak of community, I know several years ago, you all, they, they would have had a, a request for persons to make donations to persons so in hampers or contribute to us hampers. Are you all taking similar requests this year for yes. the social outreach? That's correct. I was just about to say that, yes, our social outreach committee gladly welcomes any donations that we receive, especially items for those who are less fortunate. We take dry um, goods, dry food stuff, and we also take toiletries, anything that you can think of that can assist the less fortunate. Our social outreach co committee is always available to receive and welcome all donations that come in. Thank you, thank you. So the harvest takes place. Remind us again at the dates St. and the Aidan's time. St. Anglican Church on October 13th, 2024. We start at 9 a.m. We have a very lovely praise and worship session to get everyone in that spiritual place and followed by our service, then our fellowship, a communion, a community meal, then our live entertainment. A it is, wonderful day for all. Yes. And we look forward to inviting as many persons as possible. You can yes, and for indeed. those who are not aware where um the Anglican Church is in Aruka, if you are coming from the west after you pass Lupino Junction, it is the your city Catholic Church, the next corner, the big yard, your, there's the school as well as the church there. You're coming in the yard there. You of course you'll be guiding the parking. And you can do an adequate packing, and you'll be yes. openly welcome. Trust me, it will be a great experience. At the corner of Davis Street and Eastern Main Road, Aruka. Right. In the year. exact location of the St. Aidan Anglican Primary School. Yes. So, Alicia, it has been a pleasure. I mean, you know, of course, we thank God for you and for all those who are working in the vineyard. I know this, of course, is no easy task for you to pull off these harvest festivals. And of course, we encourage persons who would like to contribute towards meals as well as towards the produce. They can do so. Where are they dropping it off? They can do so on the Saturday, the 12th of October. Um, we would be on site from the afternoon period, let's say from 2 p.m. forward. They can bring their produce. And on the day itself, when you are coming along to the service, you can feel free to bring along your cooked meals. There are persons who are on standby waiting to receive those generous contributions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alicia, for taking the time out tonight to be a part of this program. And of course, to, to extend a heartfelt invitation to all to be a part of our harvest celebrations next Sunday at St. Aidan's Anglican Church in Aruka. Thank you very yes. much, Eddie. Anything you would like we to say in closing as to why they should be there? We invite one and all, and we wish everyone to come and experience our community family feel at our Harvest Festival. We thank you very much for this opportunity. God bless you, Elisia. And we thank you very much for this.
you as well. Thank you. So we take our first break as we sing as him 337 or oh, breath of life comes sweeping through us. So we'll be right back after this. this Sunday's edition of the Anglican Voice. And for those of you who are not so familiar with this program, this we are brought to you by the Incorporated Trustees of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago. So we will be here every Sunday evening from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. And we are thankful that you are part of the program today. In the first segment, we have chatted with Miss Elicia Garraway. And we say thank you to her. Of course, that's the invitation to St. Aidan's Harvest, which takes place next Sunday, that's the 13th of October, 2024. So we say thank you very much for that invitation. The St. Aidan's Anglican Church, Eastern Main Road, Aruka Corner, Eastern Main Road, and David Street. And it is beginning at 9 a.m. with a praise and worship session. So please, you're invited to come out and join us. So we change gears a little bit now as we chat with Miss Hermes Duncan. For those who may not be aware of who Miss Hermes Duncan is, she is a lay evangelist who hails primarily from the parish of St. Mark. I will let her explain that to you why I said primarily just now, but she hails primarily from the parish of St. Mark in Point Fortin. She is presently in one of, for want of a better expression, one of our seminarians where she is studying and preparing herself for the sacred office of the diaconate. So we, of course, she, that is one of her many portfolios. She is also the interim youth coordinator for the diocese. So she has her hand filled. Of course, I will take this pleasure to introduce to you this evening, Ms. Hermes Duncan. Good evening, Hermes. How are you? 
I am well. I am well. And good evening to you, uh, Mark, and good evening to our listeners. Um, to all those tuned in wherever you are and however you're tuning in. It's my pleasure to be here again and um, to chat with you. And yeah, to chat with um, you and to give an update as to what we are up to in the youth department. Well, of course, we always look forward to that update. So, and I know you have a lot going on. But Hermes, before we get into that, we, we mentioned just now that you are primarily in St. Mark's. Can you explain that to the persons who are listening, what I meant by that? Well, you know, um, you made me laugh when you said it. Because when um, when people ask me the question, I typically say, well, you know what, to cut a long story short, St. Mark, it is because um, I alternate between the parish of St. Mark in all of our congregations as well as and um, the, the the chaplaincy for for migrants, which is led by Father Jesus Latan. So my duties take me between um, St. Mark and Point Fortin with congregations in Chatham, St. Anne, and Cedros Christ Church, as and of course Point Fortin, St. Mark, and the chaplaincy, which beginning this month from tomorrow, will now hold our services at St. Paul on Harris Promenade in San Fernando. So I can understand why you would say primarily from the parish of St. Mark. <laughs> uh, yes, and hopefully at a future program, we can discuss the new chaplain, the new arrangements with the chaplaincy for our migrants and how they can participate in each other's services as well in a language that would be familiar to them. We hope yeah. to have that program coming on soon. So well, we, go, we look forward to it. So, and you can hold me to that. You can remind me and we will put to how we can put things. But I know tonight you are wearing the interim youth coordinator hat. So, that's right. <laughs> so can you tell us what it is that's coming up? Because I know you, we have a number of things coming up. So you, maybe you, I'll leave it up to you to share with us what is taking. Well, the primary activity we have, well, coming up, or the the most the, the more immediate one, is Provincial Youth Weekend, which happens at the end of October. So that's the last weekend in the month, Friday, um, Friday twenty fifth, um, Saturday twenty sixth, and Sunday twenty seventh October. That's happening later this month, and next month. And I hope to be back to share with you deeper details on that. We take meet the bishop to Tobago. Um, we did promise when we began the pro when we resumed meet the bishop that we would go over to Tobago, and so that will be coming off by God's grace next month on the tenth of November. So stay tuned, our listening audience, for more details on that. Tonight, um, my purpose is to discuss with you to share with you. Um, the Provincial Youth Weekend, which, as I said, happens towards the end of this month. It is happening virtually, which is a bit of a change that um, COVID has thrust on us. And in some ways, it's good because what it does is it allows a wider participation, not only here in the region, but also broader field, because some of it will be um, streamed on YouTube so that we will be able to capture a wider listening audience. It won't only be for those who will be attending the, the, the weekend in a specific territory. Of course, there's also the side of the interaction, the, the bodily interaction that the online um, means don't facilitate, the online medium doesn't facilitate, but we do what we can because God gives us the means to do what we can for the season that we're in. So the theme for this year's celebration is summoned by the God who made us. Summoned by the um by, I mean the God who made us, rich in all diversity. And it's inspired by hymn number 346 in the CPWI hymnal. Um I had to laugh because just recently I was and you know, we were just talking about about harvest, the harvest at St. Aidan next Sunday. And um, I had to laugh because I was sharing with one of our regional youth um, representatives 
what the theme is and explaining to that individual the thinking behind the theme. And um, when I shared with the person the hymn, um, she responded, oh, yes, that's our Harvest theme song. So it was really, it was it was so amusing um, because it really is about a bountiful and an exuberant thanksgiving to God for all that God has done. And we heard that being, um, you know, that 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 message, that theme coming out in 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 Father Maxwell's encouragement or exhortation to those at Saint Aidan to deep to think deeply about all that God has done for us and to let that fuel um, the thanksgiving, whatever we offer at the festival of thank of harvest and. This act is really to say, you know, there are challenges that we are facing, God. But you call us to rise above it. You have empowered us to rise above the challenges that we face. Because let's face it, COVID has done quite a number on us. And even though it's about two years now that we, we've been out of the thick of it, um, we still do see some trace effects. Apart from that, we know that a few of the islands in the Caribbean were recently affected by the passage of two hurricanes, and and some of them are still reeling from it. In some parts of Jamaica, I understand, they're still dealing with getting back a proper um, supply of electricity. So this theme, summoned by the God who, caught, who made us rich in our diversity, is, is a significant one for us because it says, regardless of what are the circumstances that we encounter God, we will respond to that call. And the chorus goes, let us bring the gifts that differ um, and in splendid varied ways, sing a new church into being, one in faith and love and praise. And so we want to encourage all our youth in Trinidad and Tobago, and throughout the province to take part in this. In fact, um, just this week, we sent out the invitations to the regions, um, Archdeacon, um, the Vicar General, Archdeacon Primus, he sent out the message far and wide in the diocese, inviting everyone to participate. And just to get into a bit of detail on what that, um, what the weekend will look like. So it's not, it will be launched on Friday, 25th October at 7 p.m. via YouTube live stream event. Um, on the Saturday night, the 26th, we will have games night from 7 to 9 p.m. And on Sunday, it will be Provincial Youth Sunday. So if I could just share with you a bit now. Um, of course. What, what each night is intended to, to do. So the YouTube stream will happen, as I said, it goes live at 7 p.m. And the purpose of that video, of the it will be a compilation from the dioceses in the province. And it's intended to reflect the, the diversity of the province. Um, so each diocese, each um, diocesan representative is, is, is in the process now of coordinating with their youth representatives in their respective dioceses to pull together videos, 10 minute videos, reflecting the diversity, cultural, sporting, what have you, um, of, of each diocese. So I imagine it's going to be quite a show, quite a parade of, of talent, of, of cultural dynamism that is all about praising God and singing a new church into being. The Saturday, the games night is going to run from 7 to 9 p.m. and that will be via Zoom. So of course we will at a later date send out the um the 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 link for that so that yes. persons from joining we're hoping to cater for as many as 500 persons. So we're really hoping for a grand response. The games that I won't, I won't um, spill the beans just yet on the games that will be part of it. It will be a surprise, but I invite everyone to come in, 
tune in because it will be engaging. It will be fun. We will have half hour game segments. So it's two hours. So that'll be four half hour segments being hosted by representatives from each of the dioceses in the province. And it will be lots of fun. We encourage all to come out, our young people, however young you are, to whatever age you are, come out and have fun. Even if you can't, if you, even if you don't want to participate in the games, we encourage you to just come log on, cheer on those from your diocese. Well, in this case, it's Trinidad and Tobago. So come on, cheer on those Trinidad and Tobago members who are brave enough to put their hands up and say, yes, I will compete in this game. So we hope it's going to be fun. The Sunday, it will be just as we would in our parishes throughout the year. Um, we, we're encouraging parishes to let that be your Youth Sunday, but also your Provincial Youth Sunday month. So what um, Youth Sunday, youth, youth Sunday, sorry, not Youth Sunday month, Youth Sunday. And um, so... However, you celebrate youth in your parish, be it that they lead the service, you encourage a young person to, to, to deliver the message that day, um, that they lead the service, except for, of course, the, the consecration. However, you celebrate youth in your parish, we encourage you to do that and to let that be your contribution in your respective spaces to the celebration of Provincial Youth Weekend 2024. That's a lot to miss. And for those, for those who may be wondering, what is the province and what, is, so I will just give a brief explanation to persons. So the province, the, the Anglican Church is, it has various levels, if you want to put it like that. But for those who are listening, you'll start to be basic. There's a church, individual congregation, and then the several congregations together, they form parishes, and the parishes form the regions. In Trinidad and Tobago, we have four regions, Northeast, Northwest, South, and Tobago. So these, four par these four regions form the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, Trinidad and Tobago is one of eight dioceses in the Church of the Province of the West Indies. So the province and the, prov the dioceses that exist in the province are the Diocese of Barbados, the Diocese of Belize, the Diocese of Guyana, the Diocese of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, North and the Diocese of North Eastern Caribbean and Aruba, the Diocese of Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, and the Diocese of the Windward Islands. Of course, this information was taken from the CPWI website, cpwianglicans.org. So we encourage you, if you want more information as to what the diocese are or what the various dioceses do, you can feel free. Very early, I just wanted to throw in that bit of information for persons so they'll be a bit more aware of what it is and the magnitude of what it is that is taking place because this is a Caribbean, uh, sorry, an event that takes place throughout the entire province of the West Indies. No need to apologize because context is important. Um, you know, so it's important for us to appreciate the background against which all these things are happening. And this year is significant for us because we are really trying to regain momentum in the province. As you know, I mean, we we sometimes grow wary of hearing about COVID, but COVID really did do a number on us. And for a few years, well, um, we've we've had to really stick a big pin in the activities. In fact, um, in 2020, the the diocesan youth leaders were in the Bahamas preparing for 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 provincial youth um, gathering um, in a planning session when they all had to be hurriedly repatriated because of the, the the growing impact of what turned out to be a pandemic. Um, of the borders and all these things that's that, are, right. that that's ensued right. thereafter. Yes. That's right. And we did try to have some activities. So for example, um in 2021 and 22, we I think it was we had a bit of a youth link up. So whereas we couldn't gather 
in, the, in a major way as we would have for provincial youth gathering. We at least did something online um, to 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 keep that connection going and and so that you know I and to also tap in see what people were experiencing in their respective um, areas and also to say you know what in the midst of this we can have fun and this is a bit um, dating myself here you know as I as I'm telling you that it reminded me of 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 how Trinidadians and Tobagonians responded. To the coup back in 1990, I mean, back then there were no ads on the radio. Well, back then there was no YouTube streaming or anything like that. So really a source of entertainment was either TV or radio. And, um, and you know, we always joke, my, my siblings and I, we always joke, that was those were some of the best days for radio because there were no ads. So you could have taped all, well, back then it was tape. Um, we could we could tape with a cassette on a cassette all the music we wanted because the radio host hardly spoke. There were no ads and whatnot. And so that link up, I see as a, as a bit like that, to find solace in the midst of a storm, to find that peace, to find that calm in the midst of a storm and to hold on to something that you knew was normal. Um, and so we've been trying to do that over the years. In fact, um, last year, or the, um, we had a Bible study, and we are, in fact, gearing towards having a Bible study. This time it will be earlier in the year. It's going to actually be, God willing, in Epiphany, so look out for details on that. It will be a provincial Bible study for our young people, um, and that begins in Epiphany at the start of the year, which Epiphany, which is about you know that, that theophany, that manifestation of God, um, and helping our young people to set their year focused on God's glory, on God's greatness, on God's magnificence, and as a way to help them go through the year. So that um, so we're doing. We've done the Bible study before, and then of course next year we will do it. Um, in the midst of all of this, we're also moving towards provincial youth gathering. Um, and, you know, if you talk to anyone, any young person or young adult in particular who's been involved in youth um, for years, they will tell you about provincial youth gathering. It is like a big event, you know, and, um, and it's really exciting. And you see that spark that these gatherings create for people who've grown up in the faith. And it's important to keep those things alive. It's important to keep that momentum going. Otherwise, if there's nothing to hold on to, we kind of just find something else to engage our, our time. And, you know, we know that the things that engage the time of our young people can sometimes be activities that are detrimental to them or if not detrimental in terms of violence and such dramatic things, they're things that don't necessarily enable or, or, or help them in their relationship with God. So it's important for us in the midst of our challenges, economic and otherwise, to create these opportunities for our young people to come together. So I want to go back to one of the things you'll have mentioned earlier on, and I am commend all these activities that you have on the Sunday in the provincial weekend, provincial youth synod weekend, you mentioned that you're trying to encourage youth participation and vis visibility throughout the parishes. And you share um with other with all of us parishes, persons who are listening, how can we encourage that? Because of course some members of clergy, I don't, I don't know if they would re have received the memos. As you said, they would have circulated it far and wide, and the vicar general would have indicated that. But as we are here, can you just share with us what is the aim of that particular Sunday? Well, the, the aim is really to... It's a, it serves so many purposes. I always say God kills multiple birds with one stone, and maybe it's a bad analogy because... God doesn't really kill birds, but you got my drift. Um, 
but it's a way of passing on the tradition. Um, the only way for a tradition to be effectively passed on is if we involve those who need to receive the baton and move on. So it's it's a bit about that. It's um it's about empowerment of our young people. It's about helping them to share the expression of their experience of God with um those who are older and even those who are younger and also to share with their their peers. Um it also can serve and I say this guardedly, it also can serve a humbling purpose for our older people. Because sometimes we presume they don't know what to do, that they can't do it. But we won't know unless we we won't know unless we give our young people the space to do it, will we? And so there's so many purposes that this serves. And of course, it also serves the purpose of building community. Um, I mean, I'm sure, you know, think of yourself in class. Yes. If you have a lecturer or a teacher who doesn't know how to involve each child in the activity, that teacher loses the children who are the bold ones who will step forward and jump to the front to answer the questions or to participate in group activities. Um, and so this serves that this serves that purpose of making sure that we engage our young people in worship. Um, and you know, we, it's about building the body of Christ. It's about celebrating the gift, different gifts we have to offer, um, whatever that gift looks like. Um, as 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 the theme as the theme song says, let us bring the gifts that differ, and in splendid varied ways. It's not about limp varied ways, but splendid varied ways. It's about giving thanks and acknowledging the many ways in which God has equipped us to worship God, to give praise to God, to give thanks to God, and to bond with our brothers and sisters in Christ in thanksgiving to God. So it does so many things, but I think the, the at the risk of being wrong, Yvonne, um, I would say the greatest the greatest benefit would be to give voice to those who sometimes feel voiceless. I and, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. And and in a and, and in a safe space yes. where they know that they will be supported and nurtured. And that's so many things that we can we can conserve. It's really what we make of it and how important and critical we see it to the survival of this church of which we are a part. Yes, and I'm happy to see that you mentioned that the survival of the church, because some persons may say it is a aging church, but when we would have had youth quake recently in South, we saw the colorful representation from parishes from the Southern region, and of course, Maxi Lodes that visited from other parts of the country. I believe there was even some um, some degree of participation in as small as it may have been from Tobago as well. So in terms of the future and the succession planning enemies, what are some of the things that you think we need to address for the youth to be put in place so that the youth can understand the future, their, their place in the future of the church? I think it begins uh, meet people at the point of their need. And um, while we have an approach to worship as Anglicans, we have to give, we have to create this space for our young people to be heard and not to be heard. And while not to be heard only on a youth Sunday, but to be heard full stop. Um, and that's going to, it is going to require um, 
it is going to require the older ones to be silent at times so that we can listen. It is going to require us to forego some of our assumptions about how we think it should be. And it is going to require in that listening an openness and at least trying to approach our worship in a way that engages our young people. And I'm not necessarily talking about all the glitz and glamour, yeah, the lights and the, the, the music that drowns out the voices and creates a trance-like environment. I'm not talking about that. Um, but there are simple things. I mean, you know, sometimes we presume so much in what people want, but sometimes they want not quite as much as we, we're, we're presuming they want. Um, so it might mean, okay, fine, um, creating that space or doing activities that they would find interesting. And I mean, a few months ago, I visited a youth night, a patronal festival youth night in, in one of our parishes. At um, This was at, at St. Christopher. And it was awesome. I mean, there must have been over 100 ch ch teenagers there that night. It was a night over from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And I was just... It's not away. this year. I was tied up this year. Yeah, and that it. was just this year. And I was blown away at how engaged these people were. And they did things like the flower challenge. And, um, and, 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 but the flower challenge, of course, for biblical names. Now, that's a tremendous, it's a fun approach to learning names from the Bible. So that the next time, if I got my face dunked three times, you know, next year when they have the flower challenge, I ain't getting dunked at all because <laughs> after that event, I will go home and learn some Bible names. And then they also had like a, um, a, a, a preach off. So, um, you know, the young people were given the opportunity to choose a passage of scripture, reflect on it, and then to prepare a sermon. They were given some tips on how, and then, you know, and that happened. Um, and even at, 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 at Youthquake, um, you know, Reverend Pontiflet, she was the preacher from your parish, St. Mary's. Yes. Reverend Pontiflet Andre, she did, what is it, the, the book, which is it, the challenge? You challenge. Um, yes, that challenge, you know. Yes. One, two, three, yes, four, I, five, I, six, I, seven, eight. Yeah, yeah. that, that yes. challenge. I can't remember the name of it now. Um, I'm sure I'll remember as soon as this this the, tonight's um interview is over. But you know, and and she has done some more work with that. I don't want to spill her beans. I want her yes. to, to have um to, 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 I, I will leave that for her to do. But but that didn't just stay there, it went further. And mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing we need to encourage. Because here's the thing: when we meet people where they are they'll be more open to coming over to see what we have to offer them. Yeah. It's not that. And I think, and I think what, 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 what sometimes kills us, um, what sometimes dampens our growth is that we fear that if we allow them to express themselves in a way that makes them um, comfortable, they will not want to express themselves in the way that we try to teach them. And that's so wrong. That's so wrong. And it's about helping them to realize, I am humble enough to allow you to be who you are yes. without, it being, without it threatening who I am. And who means I think that's a very important point because the children of today, their culture, their culture differently so that... It's no longer the way how we grew up, where you spent a lot of physical time outside, a lot of physical time together. But a lot of it is virtual, a lot of it, they have a lot access to a lot more information that we did at their age, when we were at their age. And everything is different, everything is faster, everything is easily accessible. At our time, we, we were, it would have been a fun to see. To have, for example, a provincial youth said on virtually. You know, that would have been a fan to see. That's the, right. It would have been a cost that many persons, that the average person will not be able to attain. But now, due to the advancement in technology, we have everybody has cell phones, 
and these activities can be realized. So now we have the opportunity to change the paradigm of our worship, change the paradigm of our thoughts, so that we can encourage you to incorporate our traditions within the the perspective um that is attractive our youth at our present at their age and tie in the both cultures and the generations i mean uh, yeah and you know that's so true and a simple thing like this i mean a big thing for um for students who are on the cusp of going on to to further studies um or even for work um, a big thing is community service. How about helping our young people to recognize that service to the church is a part of community service? And therefore, if you are active in your church's vestry, if you are active in, in the choir in your church, if you are active in your church's dance group, if you are active um, serving, whatever it is, even as a lay minister, because, you know, after a certain age, you can go on to lay ministry. If you're active, that counts as community service. And you don't necessarily have to go to secular environments to, to, to rack up your community service hours. It can be done in your community of faith. And I agree. Homo yeah, I, for example, these can be part of this is this has become part of the church and home centers, for example, are one of these activities. But yes, I totally agree with what you are suggesting. Yeah, so so I think it's I think sometimes our challenge is we we want to make a big thing of everything. As in, in order for, for something to to happen, we must go at it in one big fantastic way. Let's face it. We don't always have the resources to go after things in a big, fantastic way. But if we just take baby steps, let it be a part of what we do every day, as opposed to, so it's, for example, exercising. Um, you might want to do half an hour of aerobic, of an aerobic workout every day. But how about if you did maybe 10 minutes every day? Yes. You're still better off than if you do none at all. Exactly. And 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 sometimes that's how we need to approach the involvement of our young people. It doesn't have to be one, it doesn't have to, it doesn't always have to be a big fantastic project requiring lots and lots of 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 of, of investment. But if we do simple things. Allow them to be involved. Get them to to bring, get the, get them to be the ones bringing up the um the offering in the church. Get them to be the ones standing at the door, um, handing out the 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 bulletin Bulletins every week. And ushering yeah. and yes, and, and this is how I started myself. Yeah, and this, ushering yeah. and, and um, so I think sidemanship is where you call really ushering up to the altar, doing communion and these things. Yeah. That's right. I mean, you see teachers doing it in the classroom every day. If they have a child who seems a little eager to be involved or whether or not, or if they want to engage a child, they tell the child, okay, you come up and sit here with me and help me do some activity. And it's simple things like that, because what that says is we see you and yeah. you are an, an important part of what takes place in this house. And we want you to be involved. And, and we see that spilling over, I guess, in sorts into, into our decision to revert to baptism as a gateway to Holy Communion. Yes. It's not about you waiting till you get to a certain age to be involved. It's about you stepping forward to the table to participate in this wonderful meal that God has given us together as a family and not you standing outside and waiting until a certain age to be allowed entry into it. And it's just the simple things we do every day, every week, every month, every year. That spill over into a way of life for us. I'm not going to is, you know, way building. of life. Christianity it, it, is not exactly. a Sunday, which a Sunday alone is That's a way right. of life. That's right. It's not an event. It's a way of life. Yes. So, Hermes, we are we're coming close to the time to wrap up because, you know, we always, it has always been the issue time, but we really discussed a lot tonight 
But I would like you now to just remind persons about the Provincial Youth Synod and, and how they can access it. Okay, so the Provincial Youth Weekend, it's coming up later this month at the end, the last weekend in October from Friday 25th to Sunday 27th October. Um, except for the Sunday, everything will be online. So on Friday, it will be a YouTube live stream, the link for which we will circulate later in the month, um, of a cre creative expressions or expressions of our diversity um, from the province. The theme this year is inspired by hymn number 346 in our CPWI hymnals, summoned by the God who made us rich in our diversity. So that Friday night will celebrate that rich diversity and how we in our respective areas respond to God who, who summons us. On the Friday night, um, we're going to have games night from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And we'll have four half-hour segments of different games being hosted by young persons from throughout the province. And then on Sunday, we invite all parishes in the diocese to celebrate Provincial Youth Sunday by finding unique and interesting ways to include our young people in the worship on that day. So stay tuned for further details. We'll be sending them out. We'll be communicating them and looking forward to great support from our clergy, from our lay people, and of course, from our young people. And I would encourage persons as well to like our Facebook page, The Anglican Outlook. You can go on Facebook, look up The Anglican Outlook to get all the information that you need, as well as, of course, a repeat of the show you'll be able to access the link there. So and also check us out on the Anglican Outlook TV so that all these, all these pieces of information will be shared and circulated virtually and it is there so that you can access it at a time of your convenience and be able to be in the know. Anyways, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining us in tonight's show as we give God thanks to you and you working feverishly in God's vineyard. I know it's not easy being a mother, being youth coordinator, being a lay evangelist, and many more hats. But we thank God for you, and we know God will continue to open doors for you to work in his vineyard and encourage others to be participants of God's grace as well. Thank you very much for having me, and in all things, we give God the glory. And as we say that, I would like you, I invite you to please close us with a word of prayer as well tonight. Okay. Let us pray. Eternal God, God of glory, God of wonder, God of splendor, God of light, God of life. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, and we adore you. We thank you, O oh God, for the work that you have equipped us to do. We thank you for the many gifts which, which you have blessed us for the work that needs to be done. We thank you, O oh God, for this medium that allows us to share our plans and to share our work with those far and wide. We thank you, O oh God, for those who host this program and for the many guests that they have entertained over the years. We pray, O oh God, that you would send more workers into this field, O oh Lord to do the work that you have indeed summoned us to do. We pray, O oh God, that we will sing a new church into being, one that reaches all no matter where they are, and that as we sing in thanksgiving, O oh God, in the hymn that you have blessed us with, that we will draw together at one table all the human family and shape a circle ever wider and a people ever free. Indeed, God, may we never be humble, may we never be, may we never be afraid, God, to bring the gifts that differ and in splendid varied ways to sing that new church into being, one in faith and love and praise. And we offer all this to you, O God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And to those who are listening, thank you for staying tuned with us for this evening's program. We ask you to join us next week, Sunday at 8 p.m right here on I-95.5 FM.
Thank you for joining us. I'm Reverend Mark Haynes, and it was my pleasure. God bless you. Good night. And I look forward to chatting with you next week. Please.